All right. So good morning, everyone. It is August 4th. Uh, we are bright eyed and bushy tailed today. I'm not as bright eyed as I should be. I was up late doing um do writing some content for for the portal and things. And before you know it, it's midnight and I'm still awake and working on the computer. So uh so today we're gonna talk about the energy body. And I love this because there's a lot of different um schools of thought on this energy body as to how many layers it has. And so in the portal right now, you just have the five body energy system um, because that is all I had time to get onto the portal. Um, I'm going to let somebody else in real quick. Um, but there's actually some people that believe that there's seven layers. There's some people be that believe that there are 12 layers. And I am rewriting uh, the chakra program for level one because in the level one program, we talk about the seven main chakras, but um, because of what's happening with the planet and because we're all doing this amazing work, they're now really um, focusing on a, a 12 chakra system. So it's the seven main chakras, but then concentrating on five um, of the off the body chakras that are also coming into play a lot more into our lives. And just some things that we need to think about when we're doing sound healing, when we're doing group sound baths and one-on-one and -on -one sound baths. So um, I'm actually rewriting that whole program in level one to make it a 12 chakra system, because I think um, we need to roll with the times. And as we ascend and as the energy of the planet changes, we need to change. I want you guys to have what information is out there. And if things are evolving and changing, I want to make sure that we have all that evolved information. So as soon as that goes onto the portal, I believe you guys will get a, a new thing has been added to the level one portal. That's a real thing. Uh, I will go through and update things all the time if I think that there's a new way of thinking that we all need to be aware of, um, because I want us to make sure that we're, our clients are going to ask, at least they ask me, they ask me about all the new chakras that we've already talked about over the past couple weeks. Um, so, um, yes. Good morning, Missy. Thank you for joining us. Um, so, um, so the energy body is this electromagnetic field around us, okay? So it's widely understood that everything is composed of energy and has its own unique pattern of vibration called frequencies. From an energetic perspective, the human body is made up of different layers of energy known as the subtle energy body. These energy layers interconnect and interact to form an energy field around the physical body, commonly referred to as the auric field or the subtle field or the energetic field or the electromagnetic field. In the past few decades, consensus in the science and medical community supports the existence of these energies and has termed them the biofield. So there's all sorts of different names for it. And depending on, you know, if you were working with... um say in a corporate situation, you probably wouldn't go in there and be like, I'm going to be clearing your aura. You would probably go call it your bio field or something else that, that would make, um, you know, that would just make, make that communication just, um, you know, a little more palatable. So make sure that you're using the terminology that matches up to the people that you're working with. The frequencies of the biofield cannot necessarily be seen by the physical eye, although um, there are people who can see auras and you can also go and have your picture taken with that aura, the aura camera uh, to kind of see what you got going on there. So, um, you know, we can't maybe see it with the naked eye, but some people actually can. And we are able to actually see that, um, you know, with the use of different equipment and things like that. Uh, the energy of the biofield regulates the biochemical, cellular, and neurological processes of the physical body. This means that any dis-ease you may feel, such as back pain, depression, fatigue, or other life challenges are the result of a disruption in the energy body, and is and those things are ultimately expressed in the physical body. So basically, we collect all these things out here throughout our day. Maybe it's someone's bad mood or just different energies. We get stressed. We, you know, just interacting with life. And if we don't get these things cleared away in this energy body, they eventually come down through the layers and they get into the physical body. And that's when disease can happen. This energy body, which is also called prana in India, 
chi in China, mana in Polynesia, and ki in Japan can be defined as a series of systems outside the body that give energy to the physical body. Visually, the energy body is often depicted as a halo around the physical body that closely follows the body's outline. The energy body could be said to resemble a cocoon of protection, drawing energy from the universe to stimulate and revitalize the systems of the physical body. So that's pretty cool to think that this energy body is actually drawing in energy, source energy and universal energy to keep us healthy and, and vital. A clear and free flowing energy body is necessary for the physical body to be able to function at its peak, allowing us to maintain a sense of well-being and healthy body functions. There are a number of layers or systems associated with the energy body, but the most, um, but the ones most clearly linked to physical well-being are the chakras and meridians identified and defined by Eastern wisdom. So the way that I think about it, and, and I do believe that the energy body is composed of our chakras radiating out from us. So our chakras are not just spinning wheels in the front. I, I'd actually like us to change up the way that we think about the chakras as their spheres. They're not just wheels because wheels can be flat and three-dimensional. Your chakra is like a sphere, okay? Um, so this sphere is spinning in all directions. So I want you to imagine that those um, chakras are actually radiating out of the front and the back of you and they contribute to creating this aura around you. So I believe that the seven the seven layer um, energy body and the 12 layer matches up with more of what uh, kind of how I look at, at the aura, um, but we're gonna go through all of those. Uh, the aura or energy body also contains information about your life, such as your emotional and mental thoughts, beliefs and memories, the chakras are also found within your auric field. These little spinning spheres can create changes in its color and its shape. So the chakras affect the color of your aura. They also can affect what your aura looks like. And, um, you know, it is said that your aura could be um, as far away from you as eight to 12 feet, depending on how much you're just flinging it out there. Um, but we also have the ability to pull it back in nice and tight. When I'm doing, um, uh, I've been doing um, ecstatic dance training recently. Uh, anybody who's been on these calls has heard me talk about this. And we always, she always has you like pull your aura back into about arm's length before we dance. That way it's not too close but it's not too far. You can maintain that. And we do some meditations and, and it's just easier that way. Um, no two auras are exactly the same as we are constantly shifting our vibrations due to changes in our thought patterns. When we are low in energy and feeling down, our aura naturally shrinks to reflect this. When we're upbeat and happy, our aura naturally expands, radiating outwards. This strange phenomenon explains why we are more attracted to happier people and less attracted to more negative people. Uh, well, unless, of course, we are also negative, uh, then we are naturally attracted to other negative people, but we are not those people. So uh, so the saying goes, if you want to manifest a happier life, only hang around with happy, positive people is actually a true thing because your aura really appreciates that. Um, so for this training that we're going to talk about today, I'm going to give you some information on all of the different schools of thought. Um, for me, like I said, I'm rewriting the seven um, chakra module from level one and making it a 12 chakra module because um, in a lot of the readings that I've been doing lately into chakra work, we're all moving into this. We are able to access these off the body. They call them transpersonal chakras. And our seven main chakras are the on-off switch for those, but they we are um, interacting with these chakras a lot more than we used to. So uh, one of the schools of thought for the energy body is the five layer energy body. And um, that consists of the physical body, the etheric body, uh, the emotional layer, the mental layer, and the spiritual layer. So this is like, um, this is kind of like the big picture. And then I feel like the seven module 
adds a couple more layers onto this base. And then the 12 layers adds even a couple more onto this base. So it, they all kind of build on each other. Um, so the, uh, the physical body is, is this physical body, our bodies. It's the lowest vibrating, densest energy. Um, it's known as matter and is easily viewed by our physical perception. We, we are seeing each other. We see our bodies. Um, Conventional medicine often focuses only on the physical nature of the body, missing the important roles that the subtle energy layers play in our physical well-being. If we look at our bodies as energy, we can see the body in a larger context and understand the energetic effects of disease and healing. So the second layer is the etheric body, and this is a grid-like matrix that resides very close to the physical body, like one to two inches away we're talking, and is considered the energetic blueprint of the physical body. Each bone, organ, cell has an energetic expression in the etheric body. The frequency of the etheric body determines the health of the physical body. So disharmony in this layer results in disease in the physical body. Illness often appears in the energy field before it is expressed in the body. Okay. The third layer of this five layer is the emotional layer. So this is where our emotional patterns and feelings are located. What we consistently feel gets locked into this layer as an emotional pattern and is expressed in our personality and how we interact and relate with the people and things in our environment. And I have all of this um, information in the portal, but I can also send all of this. I can email all of these to you. So if you guys just want to listen, I can email you all of these things we're going to be talking about today. Okay. Um this layer is susceptible to volatile movements in energy depending on the emotions an individual is feeling or what they are exposed to at the time. The fourth layer of the energy body is the mental energy layer. So this vibrates approximately three to eight inches away from the physical body. It's very closely related to the emotional layer. Uh, this is where our belief systems, our personal truths, and experiential perceptions reside. Reactions to our thought patterns also influence the energy composition of this layer. And then the fifth and last layer is the spiritual layer. So in this layer, the individual energy meets and connects to that wider field of universal life force energy and consciousness. It holds the energy of our intentions and desire to align with our higher purpose and mission. The further away from the physical body, the faster the, these energy layers vibrate, meaning the physical body is the slowest vibration. And that fifth layer is that that faster vibration. Uh, there are many teachings, again, out there. I want you to just consider, we're going to be talking about five layers and seven layers and 12 layers, but at some point, just consider that we might be talking about a hundred layers or a thousand layers someday. You know, we're just cracking the surface on all of these, but this stuff is good to know for sound healing. Um, for group sound baths, it's always nice to know what everybody's got going on and visualizing and clearing all that away. Um, but I find this stuff, I really bring in this thoughts of all of these layers um, when I get into that level two program. So, um, you know, just something to think about. So the second um, kind of school of thought we're going to be talking about is the seven layer energy body. So this is basically all of these layers are connected to a different chakra because again, I do believe the chakras radiate out from the front and back of us and contribute to this net of our aura that is around us. So uh, each of these layers will vary in depth and size, depending on the person and where they are at in their lives. Each layer also increases in vibration as it moves outward. Um, the layers of the aura pulsate outwards from the body with the first layer being closest to the body, of course. And the odd numbered layers tend to be more structured and carry a yang type energy. So the odd numbered layers are more structured and carry that young energy, whereas the even numbered layers are more fluid and carry a yin type energy. This helps us to achieve balance and harmonizes our energy. So the first layer in this um, school of thought is the etheric layer. 
So they basically, um, they, they basically take out that physical, the physical body as a layer. And so the etheric and the emotional layers, which are layers two and three in the five body system now become one and two in this, in this, um, you know, and I do give you different information here. Uh, this layer is connected to the base chakra. This layer represents the physical body, muscle tissues, bones. It pulsates at 20 cycles per minute and is stronger in athletes and those who are very active and weaker in those who lead a sedentary lifestyle or are, or, or are immunocompromised. The second layer is the emotional layer. The third layer is the mental layer. So we're following this five body system so far. And the mental layer um, is uh, connected to the solar plexus. So um, the emotional layer is connected to the sacral, the second layer. The third layer, the mental layer, is um, connected to the solar plexus and contains all of our mental thought processes, such as rules, regulation, judgment, and discipline. Usually this layer is represented by the color yellow. This layer often radiates the strongest around the head, neck, and shoulders, is stronger in those who engage in mental tasks or those who have an overactive mind. When engaging in a creative activity, colored sparks can also be seen flowing from this layer. Layer number four is the astral layer. It This extends out about a foot from us. It is the bridge between the lower vibrations of the physical plane and the higher vibrations of the spiritual. This layer represents where we form our astral cords with others. It is connected to the heart chakra and is pink or rosy in color. It becomes stronger through loving, intimate relationships and can be weaker during breakups or conflicts with loved ones. The state of the chakras are also easily visible from this layer. Uh, layer number five is the etheric template. This layer extends out about two feet. It's connected to the throat chakra. It represents the blueprint of the physical body and looks much like the negative of a photograph. This layer includes everything you create on this physical level, including your identity, personality, and overall energy. It can vary in color and is healed and made stronger by expressing your truth and knowing who you truly are. So I find that um, when we look at all of this, all of these things that we all lean into are helping to strengthen our aura. So we're doing a good job, you guys. Uh, mindfulness can really help uh, strengthen the aura right up. So level six is the celestial or casual layer. This layer can extend up to two and a half feet. It's connected to the third eye, and this is where your spiritual connection begins and the process of enlightenment begins. This layer carries a very strong and powerful vibration and represents the connection to the divine and all other beings. It is also where unconditional love and feelings of oneness flow. It's pearly white in color, and when strong, the person may have the ability to communicate with the spirit world and receive angelic messages, and it can be healed with unconditional love. And then the seventh layer in this kind of school of thought is the spiritual layer or the catharic template. And this layer can extend for up to three feet away from us. It's connected to the crown. And protecting all the other layers, it vibrates at the highest frequency. So this layer protects all of the other layers of our aura. So think of it as almost like, like a little band of light that seals everything in. It is often seen as a brilliant white or golden light. This layer represents the feeling of being one with the universe. It holds all the information about your soul and previous lifetimes. It vibrates at the highest frequency and it rapidly pulsates. When strong, this layer gives you the ability to surrender to the path of the divine and can help increase your psychic abilities. So that is the seven layer system. And um, within that seven layer, I kind of give you this little, I don't know if you guys, you can't really like read the words on it, but I give you a little picture that will explain all of this. So I'll email you. Um, I have clients this morning as Pam was healing, hearing my tale of woe of uh, taking clients too early, which is why you guys are seeing a portion of my office today uh, instead of maybe my home. But um, so this afternoon, I will email all of this stuff out to all of you. Okay, you'll get little packages 
packets of this, but also know this stuff. Um, Bill and Brian and I are getting ready to be on the road for three weeks and we're going to be reorganizing the portals, making sure everything that needs to be in there is that some of the stuff that's outdated goes out. So um, this stuff will be in the portal also. Okay. And again, look out for level one. You'll get some weird like level one. I haven't thought about that in, you know, forever. Um, I am changing up the chakra system from a seven to a 12. So just there's going to be some new information in there if you feel like you want to read it. Okay, so now we have the 12 layers. Uh, the universal life force energy is like electricity that radiates electrical impulses and creates an electromagnetic field that surrounds the body. We're going to just review this again. The energetic fields of the physical body are known as auras. Everything has its own aura, and many times we can sense the auric field of a person when we pick up on their vibe. A person's aura is connected to the 12 energy chakras of the body and is made up of the 12 different layers. So this is the seven is basing on the old paradigm of the, it consists of the seven chakras because that's what we were basing our system on. This 12 layer is going to take our seven layer and add in the five new chakras that we're adding to the base system. Okay. So we're just building on top of each other, but I want you guys to just, if you read through them and you go, this stuff seems crazy, the five is for me, then let everything else go. You have the knowledge. If a client asks, you can say, oh yeah, I heard about that. Um, but you take whatever whatever belief system works for you. For me, the seven and the 12 layers, um, our aura consisting of our radiated chakras just seems to really make sense to me. So um the uh, Each single one of these 12 layers has a different color, depth, and size, and the auric field colors are dependent on the well-being of the person, which is why self-care and self-love are an essential part of our overall well-being. Let's not forget that. We always say, like, um, we have to love ourselves. It's an energetic thing, but it legit is. It Our aura... Our, our physical and our energetic health actually depends on us taking care of ourselves and actually loving ourselves. So um, maybe putting that in, pers in that perspective can help us because I need help with that too sometimes, I can tell you. Um, the even numbered layers are more fluid and carry a yin type of energy, whereas the odd number layers tend to be more structured and carry a yang type energy. Sometimes the aura can be imbalanced due to energetic blockages, but can re be rebalanced with sound healing, with crystal healing, with Reiki, with ecstatic dance, with toning, with chanting, with an aura cleansing. I mean, yoga, um, going outside and just having fun like we used to when we were kids, which we don't uh, do too much anymore. That that really helps too. So um, the first seven layers are going to be uh, the seven layers that we just covered. Um, and I'm going to double check that because I did double check that mental, astral, etheric, etheric. Doo -doo -doo. You know, I did double check this, but now that we're sitting here talking, I'm like, you know what? Before I just say that, I'm going to just triple check that. So steel layer. Okay. Layer seven is that um, the catharic or um, that spiritual layer. So that's good. So now we're going to get into layer eight, which is the memory or time body layer. So we can add on to the seven layers that we just talked about. And this is the eighth layer is the memory body that is associated with past, present, and future Akashic records and karmic memories or past lives and is associated with the eighth chakra. So whoop, whoop, right up here, uh, which is, so in some, in for most people, that eighth chakra is the soul star. Um, and then in a lot of things, the ninth chakra is that earth star. But actually a lot of the stuff I've been reading talks about the earth star being zero chakra zero because it is the base it is lower than our root it's actually located under our feet it's 12 inches like below our feet so i actually consider that to be chakra zero um so the earth star doesn't really come into play here um in, in this manner as far as how how we're working up it does come into play but just remember that maybe where you were told the earth star is up here the earth star is actually not up here 
it's actually down into the earth. And um, a lot of people are considering that now zero, zero chakra. Um, the, this layer is also known as the white zone. This is the memory or time body layer and represents the dimension of unlimited probability. It is just below our feet. Okay, they're considering uh, chakra eight, the earth star. So chakra number eight, they're considering the earth star just below our feet and expands up to three feet above the physical body. So it starts below our feet and stretches all the way up and around us. And then chakra nine, is what they're calling the soul star. So the soul star layer, which is the ninth layer, is the soul body, which is related with the planes between the worlds of bliss and the present moment and is linked to this soul star chakra. This layer interfaces with our oneness, with divine order in our predestined soul contracts. This auric layer is very small and occupies an almost non-existent space on the physical plane. It is located several inches above the head. So they're considering that eighth to be the earth star, which is below, and then the ninth to be the soul star and work up. We'll have to just agree to disagree on that. Um, layer 10 is the integrative body layer. The 10th layer is the integrative form that serves as a link between the physical and the spiritual realms and is associated with um, the earth chakra, not the earth star chakra, but the earth chakra. This layer is also identified as the traveling path for the dream body, which can be divided, which can divide itself from the physical body and travels into the astral realms. So this integrative body is where we astral project from. It can retrieve data from our genetics as well as our soul heritage, and it holds imprints of our soul purpose. The 10th layer is also known as the body, which unites our chakras with our spiritual energy centers. The integrative body layer is located in between the physical body and the etheric body. And then we have layer 11, which is the eternal body layer. The 11th layer is the eternal body or eternal soul level. This is where our physical bodies are transformed into light bodies, and it is connected to the eternal soul chakra. It is prepared for ascension, and it is related to and lies above the eighth auric body layer in a straight sinkhole form. So it looks like a sinkhole. It's not really a, um, it's not a layer that necessarily stretches around us. And then we have uh, layer 12, which is the universal mind body layer. This is an auric layer is the divine consciousness or the universal mind body, which is recognized as the ultimate connection to the divine, universal consciousness, ascended masters, and God. It is related to the universal mind chakra. This layer is an inclusion of profound universal radiance, accessing the entire energy field of the auric body layers. So a lot of these, um, once you get off the body, they are links between physical, our physical body and the spiritual realms. They're also um, ways for us to travel and astral project. These layers tend to be more about connecting us and preparing us for ascension and connecting us into those um, higher abilities that maybe we haven't been able to or haven't tapped into until now. Um, again, unless our seven main chakras are are clear and vibrating at their optimum frequency, we can't access these chakras as much because the main chakras are the on-off switch for a lot of these higher dimensional chakras. But I will say the five chakras that we're now looking at adding to the main base we are accessing now because we are getting it together and we are vibrating at a level that at least those five we are accessing, even if we're not aware of it. Now we have 
confirmed, as we talked about a couple weeks ago, that there's 22 chakras now that we can access stretching all the way up, maybe into the eighth dimension. Um, but, you know, most of us haven't gotten there yet. Most of us aren't prepared for that. Um, and sometimes those lower off the body chakras have to be activated for the higher ones. So just think of it as this, it's layers. You have to activate this layer to access this layer. Then you have to, you know, once this gets activated and it builds and builds until, you know, you're floating above the earth as you know, and you're, you're like, I am just everywhere and everything. And then you can teach us all how to get there. Okay. Um, so, you know, regardless of, of what you believe as far as how many layers there are. And again, um, I don't like to keep my, my, I don't like to keep everything so rigid that I can't open to the possibility that we started out with five, we moved to seven. We're now at 12, Who's to say that in the next couple of years, we're not talking about 22 layers or a hundred layers or a thousand layers. Um, so, you know, this is just where we're at right now, but I would like you to at least consider, um, you know, reading through the information I'm going to send you, but doing your own research on the transpersonal, um, chakras. Those are the ones that are off the body because, um, my clients that are that are in this community that are researching and they read and they do they're already asking me about these higher chakras and how we can work on them so um i don't know about your clients maybe my clients are just weird that way but um they want to know this information and so um i'm gonna always get you guys this information and if it doesn't resonate with you then just oh that's just becky being <laughs> becky being becky um but you know i want you to have the information and in here on this, um, on this handout that I'm going to give you, it actually has this little chart that has all the 12 layers. So you'll be able to see what they look like, um, there and kind of what they correspond to. So, um, yeah, so we do collect and hold again, dense energy, emotions, stress, anxiety, in this or in these auric layers, but we can also hold happiness and joy. And, and, um, that really helps to clear out those dense energies. But as you know, um, if anybody's taken level two, um, you know, bowls on the body, tuning forks, tuning forks are amazing collectors of this dense energy. So I just did a sound healing yesterday, a private sound bath at my home and I did bowls around the body. And then I did, um, you know, I ended up doing some tuning forks, just kind of some chakra work on the tuning forks. Then I put bowls on the body and then I finished with my tuning forks kind of combing through that aura to collect all that dense energy that we just moved out. And then I moved into chimes and my gong and just all sorts of other things. And, um, and then at the end, I took my gong and just pushed all that energy right down. So all the things we're doing is vibrating all of these dense energies out of our auras. So, um, you know, it's always good to consider that when you're in a group sound bath or a private sound bath, I do a lot of visualization. I don't know about you guys, but when my instruments are playing, I visualize those vibrations and colors flowing out. Um, so, you know, now I kind of think about how my vibrations are hitting their invisible field that I can't see. And I am, I visualize that dense energy just being vibrated out of everyone as those vibrations come into contact with them. So it just gives me a more expanded view on, on how I look at how, how I'm treating people these days. So, um, yeah. So any questions, anybody want to talk about anything, any, any, uh, thing that you have heard about the energy body or experience that you'd like to share? Miss Pam. I just have a quick question. You know, when you were saying the odd numbers were the yang and the even were the yin, do you think that that goes across the board, even if you were just focusing on the seven original chakras, would you say that that's how they kind of balance? I would say for sure. And, um, you know, it is interesting that, um, that 12 body system matches up with those meridian because we have tons of meridian points, but there are 12 main meridian points that we focus on. Right. And now we're talking about these 12 layers, which also, um, matches up. So that yin and yang energy is what is in those meridian points. So I would say, even the seven main are going to be susceptible to that. That was the first time I had really heard that 
about yeah. the odd and the even. I thought that was kind of cool. And, you know, with that, um, when they're doing acupuncture and using those gradient lines, they are trying to balance out that yin and yang energy. So I think it's cool that we're thinking of the chakras in that way now also, that we're trying to balance out that yin and yang energy. True. And then, you know, yeah. you think about the moon cycles, you know, the, the eight cycles is how I, I think, and it's always changing back and forth. So you've got that going back and forth with yeah. the, the yin and yang and, and, and now you've got the chakras. It's just so amazing putting it all together. So. I love it. I love it. It's cool how everything wants to balance and it has systems in place to balance mm -hmm. if we can get out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> and let things do their do their natural things sometimes, but sometimes we get in the way and we block that. But um, it is interesting how everything seems to the human body, all of these energy systems, all of these different chakras, the meridians, all of that have ways of, of balancing out. So that's pretty cool. Uh, anybody else have anything they want to share? Anybody else have any questions about anything that doesn't even have to do with the energy body? We can talk about anything you want. Okay. Anybody doing anything cool out there right now? I will say, uh, little Miss Callie, uh, Soleil Rays at the bottom of your screen here. She's the bottom of my screen. She makes the most beautiful Reiki infused soy candles that she puts gemstones on top of and she infuses them with Reiki and they smell friggin' delicious. And I got four from her and I burned through almost all of them because I can't stop burning them. Uh, so if you guys ever want information on some really awesome freaking candles, you let me know and I'll connect you with her because they are divine. She sent me a bunch and they're amazing. So I'm just going to put that little plug right out there because they are awesome. Um, thank you, Becky. Uh -huh, yay. Uh, so hopefully, um, I know that some of you are going to be coming to take our new level two at some point in person. And some of you have already done so. And some of you are working through things, um, you know, reach out anytime. If you guys have any questions, um, you guys are all uh, students of mine pretty much. So um, if you ever want to set up a call or anything, I send out emails. I don't know if you guys get them. I figure email is sometimes easier to keep track of. So I've been emailing if you guys need anything. If you don't, I haven't been bugging you, but please know I am here. Bill is here, Brian, Mike, um, anybody else who's on our team, reach out anytime and we will make sure that we get back to you with, with whatever we need. And this afternoon, I'll get you guys out a bunch of, you know, until you're like, stop sending me things, Becky, you're fogging up my email. Um, but yeah, and if you have any questions moving forward with any of this, shoot me a text or shoot me an email and, um, you know, I'll try to answer. I'll try to answer as much as I can. Okay. Anybody else have anything else? All right. Well, thanks for being here, everybody. Uh, next week, we'll be Becca doing this class. Um, I think that this somehow got confused that this class was supposed to start at 930. I'm not sure when that happened, but it's always been nine o'clock, just an FYI. So I, I am going to send out a new link, making sure everybody knows it's nine on the portal. I changed it to nine as well. Um, but Becca's going to be doing a class on like handheld rattles and shakers and how you can like all the different types. And she wrote this really cool, it's called shake, rattle and roll. And she put this whole program together. So if you guys are able to join next week um you know you will learn a lot and um her husband is a drummer and they they are musical and i think you would learn a whole lot from her so tune into her next week um it's the day before my birthday and the day before we're traveling for a couple of weeks so i'm i'm going to take the week off but um you should have a great class with becca and then i will be back uh the next week coming to you maybe from the car as we're driving from Boston to Asheville to do some more training. But um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do for that class yet, but I'll definitely let you guys know. Okay. All right. Have a beautiful day. Have beautiful rest of your weeks, everyone. And I'll talk to you all soon. Bye. Hey.